in Riverside there can be say 10 new listings each day and then up from that to many more than, than that. I could spend every day from, from 9 o'clock till 9 o'clock showing property to people who are serious buyers who want to buy the house. If you like it, I'll, I'll um, call and... Um... Well, I'm interested, yes. Yeah. Four years ago, Amos Collins immigrated to the United States from New Zealand with a passion for American cars and a desire for a piece of the American dream. He would just name and, and a phone number. Yeah, okay. we were talking about. He came here to Riverside, part of California's Inland Empire, 60 miles east of Los Angeles. At the time, this was one of the state's hottest real estate markets, but is now being called the epicenter of its real estate woes. Hey, yeah. We're on our lunch break and we wanted to see. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. go on this, Hello. Burke. Yeah. But that has not stopped bargain hunting home buyers like Beth Jensen. The market is over flooding with foreclosures, and I figure like it's the best time to get into the market because of the uh, rates are so low that I might as well take advantage of it while I can. Um, people are buying their step-up house or the house they've always wanted at potentially like 40% to 50% less than what it was in 05. David Johnson bought this three-bedroom, two-bathroom home for $110,000. Oh, I've been trying to buy a house for oh, about the last six or seven years, and uh, just with the prices of everything, and uh, I, just, I just knew I couldn't afford it. And I had all these friends that were buying houses and telling me, oh, buy a house because you're going to make all this money, and I, I just didn't see it happening that way. And I waited, and finally things got to where it was on my side. The last owner, I've seen some paperwork on it, he paid 285 for this house and then lost it in foreclosure. So, you know, I plan on staying here for, for quite a while. But there is no avoiding the deep despair that lies behind the numbers, despair that Amos himself confronts on a daily basis. This is the property right here, and the, the new um, buyers are waiting for us. And they have damaged here, basically smashing the, the sink to remove the, the faucets and then unscrewed them. So this is going to need um, new light fixtures and a new, um, new base in there. That's a small item. This here is more here where they've taken the bathroom here and a whole uh, shower for plumbing is gone. Uh, it's, it's not uncommon that uh, properties do get damaged in the transition there with being vacant or pre previous owners taking some of the fixtures with them or damaging them out of, uh, you know, you know uh, upset that they've lost their home to foreclosure. Despite the damage, Lilia and Joe Kaliag just offered $80,000 for this property. Well, investment and the flip and then, I don't know, it's a business. <laughs> it's a good market buyer, don't you know that? Other homes may escape damage, but are nonetheless in grave need of attention. Okay, what we're looking at here is another um, bank-owned property. Uh, the, the person's evicted. Um, this is the items that they haven't, haven't taken with them. There's the bank's going to have to pay for, for this. There's a lot of cost involved in, in transferring these homes into new ownership. A recent report put Riverside County's unemployment rate at almost 14% and says that the state's economic problems will persist well into 2010, which all means that Collins' workload will likely not abate. Be able to hold for, uh, for Craig or... In Riverside, as elsewhere in the nation, house hunters may be leaping at seemingly good deals, but they do so at risk of further losses, a dark possibility for a place that has already had its share of pain. You know, this could have been... Uh, um... This could have been uh, someone who was unhappy losing their home, you know, the work of some vandal or artist, or it's unusual.